What's up, Mortgage Coach community? Dave Savage. For the first time in, I think, three weeks, I'm broadcasting out of my home office, so I'm pretty stoked to be at home right now. Uh, and I am interviewing for the first time Nick Promsky. What's up, Nick? How you doing, Dave? I'm, I'm doing good. So Austin, Texas. So yes, sir. Been thinking about getting a second home out there. Is it a pretty cool place? Oh, yeah. It's fantastic. Just yeah, no, I, I know. I know it is. It's, you know, just thriving tech community. Uh, the, I hear the market is nuts. I, just like most places in the country right now. It's pretty crazy. Right on. Well, I, I like to interview loan officers from all over America. You know, every market is pretty unique, although I feel like there's probably not a whole lot of markets where refis haven't gone away, like maybe zero rates are up and that's a national issue. And then it, it seems like just about every market, there's a, you know, a lot of um, offers coming in. What's it, what's it like in Austin to, to get a pre-approval into escrow? It's tough. I mean, we have clients working on double digit offers uh, right now, plenty. Um, it is the, probably the, it's the most competitive I've ever seen it for sure. It's the uh, lowest inventory count. I believe uh, it's under two weeks inventory in Williamson County and like nine days in some areas. And it's just, uh, it's competitive. Yeah. Every, every contract we get, it feels like it is, you know, well above list 10, 20, maybe more percent over list price. There's a full appraisal waiver. There's 20 plus percent down. Uh, it's a conventional loan. Like it, it's, it's, it, it's crazy. It's, and it's, it's unfortunate. I mean, you know, I love helping first time home buyers. I like doing VA loans and it's it, unfortunately a lot of those just, you can't sign the appraisal waiver here in Texas on a government loan. So it's a lot of those clients are having to think outside the box to find a way to buy a home. Yeah, no, it's tough. Well, I want to I want to find out how you're thriving in this marketplace. You know, when you and I were having our prep conversation, it you you said something about how right now you're you're just looking to get in front of groups of realtors, and so I I position this as wowing groups of realtors. Uh, so so first before we get into that topic, which is going to be guys, anyone listening to this, that's going to be the topic. If you have questions, put them in comments. Even if you're watching the recording on YouTube. Um, since this is the first time I've interviewed you, tell everybody a little bit about your your team. You know what kind of production you guys do. Uh, yeah, so we um, I've been a, in the mortgage business for about sixteen years. I've been originating for the last eleven. Uh, I actually got my start inside of a Keller Williams office here in the uh, here in Williamson County, and I was the in house lender for them for four years, and uh, it gave me a real good feel for the what realtors do, what they struggle with, um, and, a, and an appreciation of, of all it takes to be a good realtor. And uh, I've been with uh, Legacy Mutual for seven years now, and our team has grown a lot. So it used to be just kind of me and a, a processor, and uh, it's grown now. We have, a, we have a team of six, and we are uh, we continue to grow from 2018 to 2020. We tripled in volume uh, in, in the last two years. We've been right around about a hundred and seven hundred and eight million dollars. So two straight years over a hundred million. How many families yeah. served to do that kind of volume? Uh, three fifty nine in 2020 and three twelve in 2021. Over three hundred. I mean that is that is amazing production. And anyone listen to this, we saw a big trend in teams closing over 300 loans a year. Uh, I've been tracking that number and it was in the low thousands. You know, there was like only a thousand or less loan officers doing over 300 loans a year. And in 2020, it went up to like 3,500 and something. And, wow. and in last year, there were 6,322 teams. So, you know, what that, what that tells me, anyone listening to this is that Loan officers that are using technology, using media, good leaders who are running processes are taking market share from those who don't. So, uh, you know, now not everybody wants to do over 300 loans a year. Uh, I, I think just about every loan officer I've ever talked to wants to do at least 100 loans in a year. Uh, so let's let's unpack what you're doing to wow realtors. Oh, one other key stat, guys. Nick is pretty new to being a mortgage coach. He he just achieved just achieved becoming a black belt. So I think he's at um, 302 total cost analysis. So by the way, welcome to the Black Belt Club, brother. Now, now we got to get you to Grandmaster, which is a thousand TCA. So we'll see how fast you guys can do that. <laughs> Another year, maybe. Yeah, right. And we're so, using a lot more often now. Yeah. Good, good. Well, tell me, tell me, 
tell us why you're trying to get in front of groups of realtors and tell us what you're doing when you get in front of a group of realtors. Yeah, so absolutely. So like I said, my background is being in a real estate office. So um, I still have two different desk rentals and two different real estate offices. So I get to speak at their sales meeting every week. And then um, to meet new realtors, that's my goal is to get at their sales meeting. Uh, so whatever it takes, I'll bring in breakfast, tacos, lunch, you name it. And uh, just I just want five minutes to be able to kind of show you something of value. Uh, one of the things I realized when I was working in a real estate office is sometimes other lenders would sponsor the meeting and, and a lot of their content was very similar um, as far as here's what I can do. Here's what our rates are. We close on time. Um, what my focus is always put myself in the shoes of a realtor. What do they need help with? Like, what's a good reason to call their database? What are they struggling with in today's market? And the answer to that one's pretty clear uh, in, in the Austin area. It's, it's appraisal gaps. Uh, that's the Every single contract, like I mentioned, has that full appraisal waiver. A lot of them are coming in low. And the true like understanding of the, uh, of the appraisal gap and what it means is, is lacking. Uh, it, there's so many clients and realtors out there. Uh, you know, I love my realtors, but for, the, for whatever reason, they cannot grasp that concept of loan to value, LTV. It's, uh, it's, it seems no matter how many times I explain it, and it makes sense. I mean, they're not pricing out PMI rates and thinking in terms of LTV and things like that. But there's just so many clients out there shopping for a house right now who with 20% down, who think if an appraisal comes in 50,000 low, they have to bring an extra $50,000 to closing. And with that just being completely just inaccurate, it's, I think it's up to all of us to, to make sure we're educating clients and giving them the confidence to understand that a low appraisal might not mean what they think it means. And in some cases, it's a pretty minimal impact to their budget. Uh, so in, in those scenarios, we're I, th I find that casting a wide net and getting in front of big groups of realtors is the most effective thing I can do. Um, so this year I've been trying to get in front of sales meetings and bring up just a, an appraisal gap TCA and just, just show them a real life example of a client that I had that, um, you know, and, and I always like telling stories. I think it's important to phrase everything you, you, you do at a sales meeting with realtors as a story. So it's real world. It's not, me, 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 I did this. It's, uh, I want to talk to him about how, you know, I had a client who was losing offer after offer after offer because they, they were just not confident to sign that appraisal waiver. And the realtor finally had this client call me. Uh, we sit down together and he's looking to buy a $700,000 house and put 20% down. Um, and, I, and the first question I asked him, I said, hey, uh, what do you think would happen if this appraisal came in at 590000 so, so $110,000 below the sales price. And he said, $110,000, no way I can bring that extra. No, there's no way I would not be able to buy the house. I was like, what if I told you that your payment would only change by $89 a month and your cash to close would be the exact same that you were budgeting for? He's like, no way, that, that doesn't make sense, that can't be. And so I said, hop on your computer, pull up this, uh, this sent you, and then we went through it and we showed him what the appraisal made the LTV uh, 85, 90, and 95. And I showed him upfront PMI versus monthly PMI. And after the conversation, I mean, he was just ranting and raving. He just had a renewed confidence. That weekend, he went, he signed a full appraisal waiver. He went under contract and the rest is history. I mean, the, the loan was straightforward. It did end up coming to where the, the LTV went from 80 to 90. He bought out the PMI in cash. The loan is closed. The realtor made $21,000 in commission as a result. Uh, and so it, that's what we're all about is like we are trying to uh, educate your clients to be successful in this competitive market. Uh, I mean, that's the message I want to deliver at every sales meeting is, you know, essentially I want to tell those realtors that we go above and beyond to educate and encourage uh, clients and, and so that they understand their options. They understand the current market conditions. We want to be echoing what you're telling them. We want to be an extension of your team uh, and know that I am in your corner. I know how hard it is to be a buyer's agent in this market right now. So I want to make your life easier and I want to make you be as successful as possible in this market. And we believe that realtors that use our team are more successful than the realtors who let the client pick from a list of three. Yeah. So there's so much to unpack in everything you said. You know, one thing that clearly came out from all the things that you said is you, you kind of talked about what you're doing, why you're doing it. And you mentioned, you know, and I want everybody to think about this. When you're a loan officer, for most loan officers, your product is a combination of you, your personality, your work ethic, 
the vibe and energy that you put off, um, you know, how responsive you are, how good you are at doing transactions. And then it's your rates and your fees. And it's, that's your product. It's you and that. And you noticed that part of why Nick is doing what he's doing, it's like the product is the product. And, and I do think the industry is full of great loan officers that have great rates and fees and know how to do transactions. But he's going, hey, like, what's the problem in the market? And the problem in the market is appraisal gaps or the perception of those. The problem in the market is fence sitting or, you know, is it too late to buy or should I wait three months or six months? Yeah, buyer fatigue, yeah. Exactly. Buyer fatigue. And so he's, oh. he's selling the problem and how he uniquely solves the problem, not his product. And I, I hope loan officers really connect with that, that, and I want you to think about yourself and the conversations you've had with agents, the conversations you've had with buyers, how much of it is the product, you and your rates versus how you're solving unique industry problems. And then I'm sure the way you're doing that on a per client basis, because every, every client is unique. So let's, okay. let's, let's unpack this. And I want to really nail it from a realtor perspective, because, and tell me if you agree with this, that there's never been a better time to recruit agents, you know, like, like this is a really good time. Like you may not close more loans this year, but you could improve your market share this year. Um, so why is it such a great time to recruit realtors? Just share from your perspective with the audience. Uh, because it's never been harder for them is the simple answer. I'd say it's just being a buyer's agent right now. They're running around town, writing double digit offers for multiple clients. And it's just chaos and it's tough. It's discouraging. Uh, so if you're able to, you know, present yourself as a true partner to them and an extension of their team and bring actual value to help them be more successful and help their clients be more successful, there's just nothing else that you can do better that's going to differentiate yourself. Um, you know, I, I always say that, you know, unfortunately, the majority of our industry, most loan officers, they're order takers. You know, it's the what's what's your price? What's your down payment? What's your credit score? Here's your rate. And it's just such a huge disservice to them. Um, for, for me, I, I like the script about, I always ask if a client's the, what's your rate? What's your rate? I always ask them, hey, when was the last time you bought a car? Right. And it's like, well, last year. Okay, well, how long were you at the dealership? And like, That's four or five hours. It took forever. And it's like, well, you know, a car is a depreciating asset. You're about to make the most, the biggest investment of your life in buying a home. I think all I'm asking for is 30 minutes of your time so we can really dive into your short-term and long-term financial goals and help you feel more confident and prepared to go out in, in a very competitive housing market. And so if phrasing it that way and just being able to take that time to actually sit down with the client and educate them is what brings value to realtors right now. Because they're, you know if they're out there showing showing homes to a client who just doesn't grasp the difference of like a $10,000 bump in price and the, the concept of that appraisal gap and, and, and everything in between, it's, it's, it just limits their ability to be successful. So right now you have a lot of realtors that are struggling and maybe their, their go-to loan officer is really busy or, uh, you know, not as accessible or maybe not educating the clients that well. It's like you said, it's the best opportunity I've ever seen to, to get in front of them and really show the value that'll help you gain market share. Well, we've got a nice little live audience going right now, by the way. So those of you that are watching this live in Facebook, in our Facebook group, Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind, uh, if you have questions or things that you're pulling out of this, I think there's been some really cool phrases. Uh, Richard Murphy said, awesome. I don't know if Richard's a buddy of yours or not. Uh, no, well, Richard, we're glad that you're digging <laughs> hey, it. Richard. Yeah. Hey, Richard. Uh, so let's let's go through a, a total cost analysis. And I want you to do it as though you're showing it to real estate agents. So uh, I've been doing a lot of content. Yesterday, we had um, Denise Donahue, the mortgage nerd out of Dallas on, and we did a whole hour on her playbook. And she shared some of her um, best, how she's, I can't remember what we called it, oh, blowing the minds of realtors, you know, how she's doing it. So let's let's see your version of what you're doing and how you're doing it. Yeah, it's funny you say that. I was I watched Denise's video last night. Um, I, I was looking it over, and uh, she brought up the the TCA where she shows four options, and it was the first one was uh, what the client wants to buy, like what price range and down payment, what the max they qualify for is in the second column, and the third column is based on their budgeting goals. Where should they be looking? 
And then the fourth one was what happens if you wait a year to buy? And the moment I saw it, I, I, I took a snip of the screen. I emailed it to my team captain. I was like, this is our new uh, process for every new client. I think that's just brilliant. It's such a good way to just create a great conversation. You can really educate them on all those four different options. Like, hey, I know this is what you want, but here's what you qualify for. Here's what you're going to be comfortable with. And more importantly, don't wait to buy a house because you're going to be looking at higher rates, higher prices, everything like that. You, you know, another one that was pretty cool. I, I don't know if you saw the interview I did last week with Gracie Morrow. Did you happen to see that? I did not, no. So Gracie did, she's doing like, hey, the loan comes in. Column A is what they ask for. Column B is the maximum that they qualify for. And then column C, you know, third column is an appraisal gap. So um, an appraisal gap. And then the last column, I see a lot of people when they do the cost of waiting show one year, but Gracie so in six months. Uh, and I thought, hmm, you know, like that's a good idea. And then she's tailoring it. Now, Denise didn't totally dig the appraisal gap um, kind of being a default because she's like, that might scare them. Um, you know, I don't know. It sounds like in your market, they're just, they are scared. Like you, you, you know, that that's on their mind. And so let's just get to it. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So we don't, we usually don't do the appraisal gap at pre-approval. Uh, we usually, okay. until they start, they're out there shopping for a home and we ask the realtor to keep us clued in and ask a, like, once they actually start looking like what's the price range, what offer price is it going to take to win it? That way we can put together a real, like real world uh, and hopefully property specifics. We have the taxes and everything like that. Um, so this is the one I presented at, at an office recently. Can you see, see my screen? I can. Yeah. Keep it rocking. This is great. Yeah. So this it's the exact same uh, scenario I was discussing earlier. Cause like I said, the, it's such a good success story of like a client not getting it. Then after a short conversation, they get it and then they go under contract. It's just a really just all around great win. And uh, so that's a $700,000 house. It's 20% down. So it's column two. Um, so if I'm, if I'm presenting in front of realtors, uh, before I even start talking about the presentation, I want to I talk to them about the market, how we understand how tough it is. Um, our goal is to help you be more successful with your clients. And in doing so, we use it education for your clients to really understand their best case scenario, their worst case scenario, and everything in between. Uh, and so in this scenario, we showed 700. What happens if the home appraises for 660? What happens if the home appraises for 625? And what happens if the home appraises for 590? And so uh, you, the middle two, uh, you'll see that the cash to close went up just a little bit because we did upfront PMI. And then on the far right at 95 LTV, we added monthly mortgage insurance. So um, I, I try not to use too many technical terms in the real estate meeting. I just talk about how uh, we lenders think in terms of loan to value. And, and what we mean is loan compared to price or appraised value, whichever is lower. So right. an appraisal comes in low, look at all these different options to where their cash to close does not change at all. We can always finance 95% of the appraised value for clients with good credit. Um, so that's what we want to show is say, you know, if you could show this to a client and say, here's what happens if the home appraises at list, or here's what happens if it comes in a hundred, $110,000 low. Your difference, as long as you're prepared for the budget up, up front and you can handle an under $90 a month for your payment, you're going to be comfortable proceeding and you're going to sign that appraisal waiver with confidence. Um, so that that's what we do in those meetings. And what I've found is when, when we present these in meetings and I'm in front of groups, realtors will pro, it used to be I'd present in a group and I'd get business cards and I'd try following up with them and setting coffee meetings. Realtors are immediately contacting me after these meetings. They're asking to really? come to their individual team meetings, present again, let my team, I want to make sure all my buyers agents understand this. So we just, it, it books several follow-up appointments. And, and for me, as someone who hates cold calling realtors, um, it, it's good. It's all I need is something like a lukewarm introduction. And if, if uh, it's, I always talk about when I, I coach a small group of loan officers in our company, I always talk about the law of attraction. And so the, the right realtors, you know, the ones that hear what you say in this meeting and see the value in it and reach out to you about it, those are the kind of realtors I want to be working with. And so it, right, right. You're, not a, you're not chasing them. They, they see the value. And so that's the ones that we are, uh, you know, if we deliver the message really well in the meeting and they, they follow up 
it, it doesn't get any easier to schedule a coffee or a lunch and get to know them and see how you can help. Um, and so there's all kinds of things uh, that we can do there. Uh, the other thing we've- hey, hey Nick, could you- Yeah, go ahead. Quick, I want to get a link to this because I want to share it with our um, Facebook audience. Could you go up to the very top and grab a link? Um, I'll show you. Go to the little hamburger menu on the left there and um, just click share, boom. So that's now, guys, everybody, you don't have to go and copy it again. It, it's just so you know, Nick, when you clicked share, it saved it. So you don't have to go recopy it again. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you could just share that in comments down below. Um, but notice anyone that's new to Mortgage Coach, it's got his picture, personal branding, his corporate brand. Uh, you know, this is obviously, and, and I've been hearing, everybody has a different, unique way of doing it. But guys, this is working throughout the market. So I highly recommend that you, one, get in groups of realtors, two, create social media content around this, you know, do a Facebook Live, uh, create a post. Uh, but by the way, are all the realtor meetings you're doing right now, are they in person? They are, yes. Yeah. Okay. So important and to as note. Of the, as of like late January, early February, it seems like most offices are meeting in person. But I mean, happily, I mean, during the uh, you know, last couple of years, I was on Zoom as often as I could with every real estate office possible, just doing the exact same thing. Cool. Could you share that in um, com in the little chat area right here in Zoom? Yeah, I think I have to stop my. Uh, oh, there we oh, go. Okay, don't don't worry about it. I don't want to. I don't want to stop. I got it. it. Uh, you it got it there. Like, yeah. Okay, so guys, I oh there it is. I got it, everyone. I will get for those of you who are asking for that in um, Facebook. We'll get it for you if you're watching this in. YouTube, it'll be down in show notes. So um, before we, any, by the way, anything else you want to share on this particular yeah. strategy? So, I mean, I, I've been beating the cost of waiting drum for three, four years. And it used to be just flyers. It used to be, uh, hey, here's what your payment jumps up if rates go up 1%. You know, it's $150 a month at a $200,000 loan amount. Here's what it is at 300. Here's what it is at 400. Um, and I did a, a bunch of variations of flyers. And so I would um, present those at real estate offices and same thing. Like I want the realtor to reach out to me to get a copy of the flyer to share on their social media. Um, and so that's, that's, I would, I wouldn't like bring a bunch of handouts to give to them. I would just show them one on a big screen and hopefully uh, have them reach out if they thought it was valuable. And so, and then I would share it on my social media and get a lot of shares and things like that. And so the cost of waiting, I mean, the, the there's so many people who probably were about to buy a house in like 2019, 2020, and then decided to keep renting or whatever it is. And just the massive move up in equity and property values is just, I mean, even if you run conservative numbers, like the one I'm showing right now is a super conservative, like cost of waiting. I, I did that for a specific realtor who was asking, Hey, what happens if I wait like three to six months? And this was in January. And I was like, well, you know, what if rates go up a half a percent and property values go up 5%, you know, just something very conservative. And you can see it's $209 a month and we've already seen rates go up more than a half a percent. And we've seen, uh, and, and we've seen property values go up probably 10, 15% in a lot of cases. And it's only, it's only March 3rd. So uh, as a result, that's, that's, you know, it, oh yeah, sorry. And going backtracking to the realtor meeting, I always extend the offer. Like, hey, if you have a buyer in your car and they are not grasping the concept of the appraisal waiver, or if they're thinking about waiting and you want to see a cost of waiting side by side, or if you have an appraisal gap you want to see side by side, just email me with the price, what you think the appraisal might come back at, what, how long you think they might wait to buy, and I can work up both of these for you within, within an hour or two usually. So just always reach out to me. I'm always available to be a resource to you and help you however possible. So uh, like I said, just extend that offer and, and hope that the realtor reaches out uh, to, to get that additional information. So, so I'm going to, one, if we could get a link to this one too. I just had someone ask for that. So um, put that in chat. And when I'm not talking, guys, I'll put it, I'll put it in here for you. Um, and then I want to put you on the spot. After, after you copy that, I'm going to have you do something. Uh, but I'm going to let you copy that first. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. Now I want you to go into the advice engine. I want to I want to show the audience a few things, and then I want to show you something that I think. So one, notice, guys, he just hit black belt, uh, three hundred and two. 
And then I want to call out the fact that it's been viewed 1,539 times. So guys, that means on average, every one of these links is getting viewed five times, uh, which tells me he's not only sharing the link with the consumer and the borrower, he's, he's got real estate agents in the loop. You know, you, usually it's less than three views if it's not a real estate agent and five to eight views per TCA if you're looping in referral partners. So anyone listening to this, make sure you do that. Uh, Nick, you know, it does look like you can work on your videos and, and, and I'll bet you just adding a video to these will increase the engagement, the value, and the, you, you'll, you, if, if you're getting five without a video, you're going to be getting eight views and, and think about it every time that someone clicks on this and they watch your video, they're getting value. They're seeing yeah. your face. They're like, you're a rock star, you know? So if you want to be a local rock star lender, use mortgage coach, use TCAs, put your video on it. Um, now, Nick, yeah. I want, Oh, anything you, you wanted to say there? I was just saying, I watched that video that you had the other, uh, I think it was, I was watching that video last night and it said that sending a TCA without a video is like giving a vegan a cheeseburger. Uh, oh, Jeremy Forcier. I see. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. I, thought, I was like, yeah, that's, that's uh, something that we wanted to for sure implement this year. Uh, we were definitely going to start doing it. I, I always try to be on the phone with the client when they're looking at it. So they are hearing my voice as they go through it. But yeah, videos, it's, it's a no brainer. I got it. Well, well, even after that, just, you know, it, like Jeremy will do the same thing and then he'll put a video on it and he'll mm -hmm. just reinforce what they said. Cause remember it's social. It's they're sharing it with different folks. So yeah. it was do once you've done, 50 or more videos, I'd love to do another interview with you because, you know, it's cool that you're yeah. just became a black belt. And then I'd love to hear how, how it went for you with that. So let's go into the advice engine again, click on the logo in the upper left-hand corner. Now I know you have a team member that sets these up, mm -hmm. but go into the borrower that we just went through the cost of waiting. Do you know which one that is? That was just a generic one. Uh, well, go, to, go to that generic one real quick. Right, I want to, so he's going to a generic TCA, or he's going to try to. He's got a, and, and by the way, this is another note. He's got a team, so he knows how to talk okay. about it. He knows how to present it. He knows strategy, but it's not like he's the guy creating all these TCAs. Now, I want you to go down to analysis. You see on the left-hand corner where it says analysis going down there. And I want you to click, so it's a $208 difference. Um, notice that over 60 months, it's, um, 1,000 or it's 13,744. So he's blowing it up. I want you to click on um, adjust um, reinvestment analysis. You see where it says adjust yep. reinvestment? Click on that. Mm -hmm. And now let's put, um, let's take the assumption that this client um, would take that two, what was it? $202. 208. Mm -hmm. Put that $208. Um, right, you don't see those two zeros where it says, re yeah, put it right there. Put 208 right there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, consumer, um, you, you could close this now and let's go back to the actual um, scenario. And what you guys are going to see, go to another screen just so it saves, you know, click next. And then go back to analysis. I want you guys to see this. It's going to blow up. Look at that. Now it's $14,000 in savings and scroll down. But over 15 years, look at that. I mean, we're talking 40, 50,000, yeah. $50,000 difference. So what you're doing here is you're blowing up the difference. Now I'm not yeah. saying with every cost of waiting that you should do this, but every chance you get when you're trying to help a consumer make a better decision, you're showing them, you're, you're educating them. First of all, a lot of consumers don't know the power of reinvestment. Um, go back to the TCA real quick. Go back to the, 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 the actual total cost analysis. Because that $200 is also going to show them how much faster they could pay off their mortgage. And I'll bet you, um, by the way, you could just click in the upper right-hand corner where it says preview and highlight. That's Sorry, I got, I got the, the top oh, there of the you screen go. in the way. Sorry. No, that's okay. I get it. You had the, you know, but, but look at this, you know, it's showing that he could, they, the family could actually pay off the house in 25 years, become yeah. debt free five years faster. Um, so, so like, Hey, do you want to wait and have a higher monthly payment and pay off your house in 30 years? Or do you want to buy now 
and let's just pay an extra $200 a month. And you could actually, you know, have more financial freedom faster by buying now. So just anything you can do to make, you know, put more value on what's best for the consumer. So again, I'm not saying sell this to them. No, uh, I mean, we use the reinvestment tool a lot for, uh, for clients, especially like you see a lot of clients and they, they sell their home and they want to put all the equity down on the payment. And, you know, two, three, four years ago, I remember looking at that and saying, man, if I was in their situation, I'd put less money down and pay off my car, pay off my credit cards, pay off my student loans and everything like that. And this software has given me the confidence to just outright tell them like, hey, let me show you what happens if you remove all the debt and you start making extra payments towards your mortgage, you can become debt free. It's so much faster. And it's just, just like I said, just a lot more confidence to be able to deliver that message as an advisor instead of just, uh, you know, like I said earlier, being an order taker. So let's stop sharing the screen and let's go into a little bit of a wrap up. Uh, I, I would love just how, how long have you been really using mortgage coach? Like how, how long has it taken? And I know you probably started and stopped and, you know, but what, what has been your mortgage we, coach story? We started using it a little bit um, at the beginning of 2020 and like right in January is when we, I think I first signed up and, um, and we were doctors. It was kind of like, I thought there was only a particular client that would benefit from it in my head, I think. And I was obviously very wrong. Uh, but the, as we got into late 2020 and 2021, it started becoming a regular part of our pre-approval process. And it's, you, you know, you start off with the basics. It's, Hey, here's based on your budgeting goals. Here's what your payment and cash to close would be at like four different price ranges. Um, and then as you get, you know, then you use it for the rate lock conversation. And now, now it's just, like I said, we've moved on to using reinvestment strategy. We use the appraisal gap all the time, cost of waiting is just, the more com the more comfortable we get with it, the more experience we get with it, the more the more we want to use it. And so it's just been a huge tool. And it sounds like you're doing move up analysis. So hey, family, mm -hmm. you can yeah, exactly you can move up and put some money in the bank and build your net worth faster. Yeah, we talk about using that money and putting it with a financial advisor and how what your net worth looks like in 15 years compared to just you putting the money down in the house and just you know a huge difference. And guys, that's a huge one in this market. You know, like when you can show a group of realtors how you're going to help them get listings and buyers. Realtors like that kind of thing. Financial uh, advisors love it too. You yeah. Can, no, you financial you're encouraging advisors. clients to, to put money in the market and invest as opposed to putting it all on your house. Love it. Love it. I want, but in closing thoughts, there are a lot of loan officers that either they don't do a TCA for everyone or they don't use it because they're just like, my market doesn't need it. My clients don't need it. Or one out of 10 of my clients needs it. Could you just speak to the loan officer that has that in their head? Because uh, I can tell them how that's wrong. You know, I mean, I've interviewed enough loan officers that have been through that journey to just know that I don't care if you're in Pasigula, Mississippi, your clients want a TCA. Could you yeah. tell it your, your, your yeah. story on that? I mean, that used to be me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, like I said, I was a really slow adopter and it was just, it was just nerves. Like I didn't feel comfortable with the software. And honestly, it took my, my team captain getting really good at it first for me to really start using it more. Um, and, and then, then you start realizing the just the power it has. And like everyone, I think every good loan officer has, there's like the art to communicating a complicated topic in a simple way so that everyone can understand it. Uh, this helps you visualize it which is, was a struggle. A fees worksheet is just so old school and just does, it just does not have half the impact that a TCA will. And, and once you start using it confidently all the time, you start getting the feedback. People will just be like, wow, thank you so much. I had no idea that this was, you know, these were my options. And I just thought that you just put a certain down payment and this is my rate. I didn't know that there were so many ways to look at it. And it's just, it, it just sets you apart. Uh, simply put, it just, it really does show that you are bringing more value than the average loan officer, especially if you're comparing to the online lenders and things like that. It's, they're not getting anything close. Um, so it, it just, it, I would highly encourage anyone who's hesitant to, to adopt the software and just, just dive in and start using it. The more you use it, the more comfortable you get. And it gets, it's, it gets pretty easy. Now, like we, we work them up in a matter of minutes. Yeah. And if you have a team, this just becomes a new team standard. Uh, you know, so dude, this is really going to help Legacy Mutual get better adoption. I'm sure, you know, your own internal team will get value from this. And then this was a huge gift to the greater mortgage coach community. You know, our, our mission at mortgage coach is to change how people get into debt. 
Uh, we think that a fee worksheet is a very dated, inefficient, commoditized, confusing way to make a liability decision. And we think a total cost analysis is what America needs. And, and you're helping us with that mission. So I appreciate it, brother. Uh, anything you want to make sure you say to everyone before we wrap up today's call? Uh, nothing I could think. I mean, thank you so much for having me. This has been, uh, I guess, being in the Facebook group, uh, I was telling a couple of people in my company, I said, I've gotten more value out of this Facebook group in the last two years than any other, anything else in our industry. It's really? just like thank tangible, you. good content to help increase your conversion rates, market to realtors. I've always been a numbers geek just at, at, by, by nature. Like I, that's my favorite part of the job is explaining the numbers and the pros and cons of five, 10, 15% down versus, you know, a second lien, you know, all that stuff. I just love it. And so this just gives you that tool to make it, um, to visualize it, to help clients really grasp it and understand it better. And uh, as a result, like I said, it's just, it's, it's been fantastic. Thank you for all the content you keep putting out. Well, I love what I do. You clearly love what you do. So um, we're just having fun doing what we love to do. <laughs> so, so anyone watch this, if you do not subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe so that every time I do an interview or our team does, you get alerted. You can decide by the headline if you want to check it out. Uh, you heard it from Nick. If you're not in our Facebook group, check it out. Now, now remember, you get value by one. You got to check in. And again, I'm not like Facebook can be bad. You know, there's a difference between busyness and business. So I am not advocating that you use Mortgage Coach Facebook group for busyness, but but you should check in. And by the way, what is your rhythm? Like, how do you do it? Because you're obviously doing 100 million. You're killing it. You know, what is your rhythm when you either watch a YouTube video or a Facebook group? Like, is it a couple times a week, once a day? Yeah, I would say about once or twice a week. Uh, and I try to, like, a lot of times I'll be exercising in the morning or something like that. And I'll have my headphones in and just listen to something or maybe in the evening, if I have a second, uh, usually once the day gets going, I try to avoid Facebook. Um, and so no like, problem with that. That's about how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to win by new guys. That means hit your prospecting for all you new loan officers, yeah. prospect, kill it by noon and then you know replace some of your netflix times with our with our channel so thank you brother appreciate it man thank you good take care everybody have a great day